All right, here we have our first example from the limiting reactants topic. And we have gaseous but butane uh, reacting with gaseous oxygen to produce uh, carbon dioxide and gaseous water. So the first thing, before we do any stoichiometry, is we need the balanced chemical equation. What are, are our reactants? Well, we have gaseous butane. Reacting with uh, gaseous oxygen to produce carbon dioxide gas and water vapor. So I double check my chemical formula. It's correct. Oxygen is diatomic, carbon dioxide, and water. I have all my reactants and products. The last thing to do is to balance it, and then this will serve as our starting point for stoichiometry. So this reaction is one of those more involved reactions, um, but nevertheless, um, we should be able to find the correct coefficients, and using the fractional coefficient, I get 2, uh, 13, 8, and 10 is my coefficients here. And also, we technically don't need these parentheses here in the chemical formula. Now let's look at the amounts of our starting uh, substances that we have here. It says suppose that 41.3 grams of butane, so we have 41.3 grams of this to start, is mixed with 61 grams of oxygen. Calculate the minimum mass of butane that could be left over by the chemical reaction. So we want to know how much of this is left over. Now, in the, in the wording of the question, they've already indicated what our limiting reactant is. The oxygen must be our limiting reactant, and the butane must be our excess. How do I know that? Well, when I go back and I look at the problem, they say calculate the minimum mass, um, calculate the minimum mass of butane that could be left over by the chemical reaction. So this, this word right here, or this phrase right here, left over, is my key. That's why I know that butane is going to be my excess, because by definition, your excess reactant, there's going to be some left over over once the reaction stops. By definition, your limiting reactant is completely consumed. So even though I have more oxygen, more mass of oxygen than I have of butane, this oxygen is going to be used up much faster than the butane. And once this 61 grams of oxygen is gone, the reaction will stop and there will be some of this left over. Now you could see when you're looking at the balanced equation, you could get a hint of what re which reactant is going to be used up more quickly, the oxygen. For every two moles of this, 13 moles of oxygen is used up. Okay, so you can't just go off the gram amounts, uh, but you actually have to calculate limiting reactant in the way that we've done in, in previous problems to determine what your limiting reactant is. In this case, the wording of the problem told us what our limiting reactant was because by definition, the reactant that where you have some left over once the reaction stops is your excess. Okay, so they said how much butane is left over? Butane must be your excess reactant. So oxygen can only be your limiting reactant. So the question is, again, how much butane is left over once the reaction stops, once all of your limiting reactant is used up? So what we're doing is we are converting, uh, oops, so what we're doing is we are converting from this to that. We're converting from uh, an amount of oxygen, and we're going to convert to an amount of butane. Now, what that amount is going to be is how much butane is required to react with all of this oxygen. Okay? So the amount of butane that we're going to get to react with all this oxygen should be less than 41.3 grams. We're going to see how much less. So when we do stoichiometry, our starting point 
is going to be our limiting reactant, our amount of limiting reactant. We're given an amount in, uh, in grams, as a mass. So I start with 61 grams of O2. I need the molar mass of O2 to convert to moles of O2. Now that I have moles of O2, I can convert from this substance to this substance. Okay, so uh, I, I do that using the coefficients from the balance equation. The coefficients read as this. 13 moles of O2 react with 2 moles, and I'm just going to write uh, butane out instead of its chemical formula. 13 moles of O2 react with 2 moles of butane. That came from the balance equation, and this reaction always happens in these proportions. So, uh, grams of O2 is gone, moles of O2 is gone. Now I have moles of butane, but I don't want to stop there because they asked what the minimum mass, and that's an, let me pick another highlighted color. They, act what, they asked what the minimum mass of butane is. So I need a mass, not an amount in moles. So let's use molar mass to convert from one mole of butane to grams of butane, there are 58.12 grams of butane in a mole. Moles of butane is gone, and I'm left with grams. So we put this into the calculator, 61, 1 over 32, 2 over 13, 58.12 over 1, I get 17.04 grams of butane and we can round it to two significant digits that'd be 17 grams of butane is that my answer do I circle that and go to the next problem no that's not my answer what this is is how many grams of butane will be used up to react with all of this 61 grams of oxygen so when all of this 61 grams of oxygen reacts it's only going to react with 17 grams of butane so they say, uh, how much butane could be left over? Well, to find what's left over, what the excess is, we take what we have to start, which is 41.3 grams, and we subtract to that what is used. That is 17 uh, grams. So 41.3 minus 17 gives me... 24.3 grams, rounded to two significant digits, which is what they asked for, 24 grams left over. Okay, so we have these two reactants. I have 61 grams of this, 41.3 grams of this. You mix them together, allow them to react. The reaction will proceed. Once all of the oxygen is gone, and the oxygen will run out first as the limiting reactant, the reaction will stop. No more carbon dioxide or water will be produced. At the point that the reaction stops, this is gone, and there are uh, 24 grams of this left. And that's all that stoichiometry is. So in this case, we had to convert from this to this, this reactant to this reactant, to figure out how much of this reactant would react with the given amount of oxygen. Another question may ask us to figure out how much of a product would be made, carbon dioxide or water. In that case, we do the exact same thing. We identify the limiting reactant first, and then we convert from that substance to either product. Okay, The same process. We can convert to products to figure out how much of this is made or how much of this is made. Or we can convert to another reactant to figure out how much is required to react with all of that. 